Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. We'll get started here in one second. Let me know if you could, please, if you can hear me. Just want to make sure the sound's coming through. Let me know, guys, if you can uh, hear the audio coming through. Just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, teacher. Yes. Great. Oh. Great. Thank you. Okay, we'll get started here in just one second. All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started, guys. Uh, I had an opportunity to look at uh, some of your poems, those of you who have uploaded to the wiki. Make sure that you guys are uploading your progress for the Tankas and the St. Canes to the, your wikis in Aula Virtual, in, in the virtual classroom. Make sure that, um, that you're writing at least one stanza, right, for each of the types that we're working on this week. And I went in and left comments. To those of you who have uploaded your, your poems, I've added comments to your work. And one of the things I want all of us to think about when we're developing our poems, I'd like for you to be able to identify the type of figurative language that you're using. Yesterday, we had a review of figurative language in the form of a, of a quiz. And we're going to offer the same quiz next Wednesday again. So I'd like for you to continue reviewing the page, the website on figurative language that, uh, that you're using when you're developing your poems. And I would also like that you are able to identify the types of figurative language in your poems. So in many cases, in fact, I think in all cases, one of the comments that I made was asking you if you could identify the type of figurative language that you're using in your own example. So try to not only use the figurative language, but also be able to uh, identify which one it is and maybe include it in the comment section in your wiki, okay? So that I know that you know which type of figurative language or which types, plural, of figurative language you're, uh, you're using. Uh, what else? Also, think about the five senses. Okay, we didn't, we haven't talked much about the five senses. Five senses, but whenever you're writing poetry, it's always it's always good to think of the five senses and how you can communicate one or several uh, of the five senses. Right? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? What does it look like? Right? Which is, I think, most of us can relate to. I mean, if being visual learners, we might include that in our, in our poems. But what does it sound like? Right? So think about the five senses when you're describing a person, an event, right? An object, whatever, whatever the, uh, the topic or the theme is. Think about the five senses and how you can communicate or articulate that through using figurative language. One of the most dangerous things to do with poetry is to write too literal, okay? So in many cases, we can try to write more figuratively, less literally. And again, finding different examples of figurative language is gonna help us do that, right? That's what, that's the vehicle. Those are the devices that we use, right? To, to write creatively is to write figuratively. All right, so what I want to give you guys a chance to do today, if you haven't already, everyone needs to create their wiki. Tomorrow we're going to have our next poetry reading. And some of you have sent emails, or not emails, but chat messages to me to look at your, your work. And I've tried to get to everyone. If, I, if I've missed someone, uh, please let me know. Today we can discuss... Uh, your particular poem, maybe if you have some particular challenges or questions that relate specifically to your poem, we can talk about that. I think in some cases also, I asked some of you to actually ask me in class about certain aspects about your poems. So, we session. All right, so I want to spend the rest of today kind of dealing with um, your your 
questions and doubts kind of on an individual basis, feel free to jump in, unmute your mic, and uh, let me know if you have questions, something that you want to discuss about your poems. But please check in your uh, in the comment section of each of your wikis for comments. And again, if I missed anyone, uh, let me know and I'll take a look at it right now. Or if you're finishing up on something, even if it's a line or two and you want me to look at it, we can uh, do that today in class. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mute my mic. Feel free to jump in with any questions or doubts, uh, but we wanna continue today working on our tanka and our sinkane. Try to finish as soon as possible. I, again, I, I want to give everyone at least one round of feedback before tomorrow's poetry reading. Okay, perhaps there's, it's gonna be a perfect poem and there's nothing to change and that's great, but I, I, I want you to have at least uh, some feedback from me before you go into poet, to tomorrow's poetry reading. Uh, it's going to be fairly quick again, uh, the poetry reading like last week. So we'll probably have 15 to 20 minutes tomorrow getting started to again review, maybe uh, do some last minute practicing of reciting. But make sure that, you're practice, that you practice reciting your poems. With the Tankas and the Sinkanes, we have more variety and more flexibility in the way that we deliver our poems, the way we say it, right? We're not confined to a specific intonational pattern or even word stress pattern, right? So you can take some liberties. You can, you can be flexible in how you deliver, even with the pauses. You can have pauses in the middle of a line. Obviously, you can have pauses at the end of a line, right? But uh, when you're practicing reciting your poems, try not to speak too quickly. Try to slow down and try to articulate, enunciate very clearly the words so that no words get lost, right? So every word has a very significant meaning in this short story that you're delivering, you know, for, for both the Tonka and the Sin Cain. Finally, one last thing. Make sure that you're looking at the structure of each of the types of poems, all right? And uh, we need to include turns in some cases, right? Uh, the uh, tanka, we need to have a turn or a volta. And so we need to make sure we have that. With the same cane, it's probably not necessary. We, we probably are thinking about just focusing on one thing. And, you know, I'm not saying that you can never have contrary or opposing like adjectives or ideas in a same cane, but make sure that you're aware of the overall message that you're trying to send. And we don't want to have words that may, might be interpreted as, as being out of place or, or confusing the message, right? So make sure that you're, you're thinking about that one overall theme, topic, the message that you're trying to share with your poem and Try, try to find those words that best represent that message, okay? But um, make sure that you take, take uh, that you're aware of, of that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mute my mic. Feel free to jump in with questions, doubts, or if you want me to look at something, we can do that today in today's session. I do have to share one example. I saw a lot of good examples, but uh, this was one example that I, you might want to take a look at. I really like these examples. The Sin Cain friend, likable, charming, supporting, listening, caring, always cheering me up, soulmate. Right? That's good. Always cheering me up. Cheer up, phrasal verb, right? Think about like all of these adjectives are very clear and, and representative of this, of this person. 
I really like the last mate soulmate first making uh, finding a good synonym that represents kind of the essence of in this case, what a friend is. All right, the tanka. I love your soft voice. And the way you make me smile, I think that's the instead of they. You aren't by my side. If only I can see you, I would hug you tight tonight. Tight tonight, right? That a, has a good kind of a, a flow to it. I would hug you tight tonight. Right, those are words that kind of go together. They sound they sound good together. They they uh, they're very similar in sound. They have the same first letter. All right. So again, some good examples here of figurative language and really articulating a message. Um, teacher. Yes. Yes, go ahead, uh, Damaris. Um, teacher, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, thank you, teacher. Um, I have a question just to confirm about the tanka. The tanka is not necessary that the last words rhyme, right? That's correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. With the tanka and the same cane, there's no rhyming. Now, that doesn't mean you don't, you can't, but you don't have to, right? And, and uh, you know, so there, there are certain sounds that you could repeat and, and certain letters like alliteration where you start one line and you have many words within that one line that start with the same letter, all right? So there are different ways, different types of figurative language that you can use, but no, there's no rhyming scheme like what we saw last week with the limerick okay teacher thank you you're welcome if you guys need to double check in uh, the virtual classroom we have a page for tankas and we have a page for sin canes and this might serve as a, a review if you're again not sure remember we have two options for the sin cane and you can uh, do it by syllable count or word count. Some of you who have already completed your poems, if you can identify the figurative language, I would encourage you to try it again for another one and you can decide tomorrow if you wanna read one or the other. In fact, you can read more than one if you want. We're gonna have enough time to, to do that. You can also choose more than one stanza for the same for the same uh, poem, right? So you could have a sin cane with two stanzas that relate to the same idea, if you want. Teacher, I have a question about my poem. Okay, this is Ali? Yes. Okay, which poem? Uh, it says, uh, in the sin queen. Sin queen, yes. Um, yeah. uh, sin queen, okay. Uh, I have uh, a comment by you, and it says, I will think about the overall meaning of your poem. Think about the five senses and how you might express them in your poetry. I don't understand that part about the five senses. Okay, the five senses uh, relates to describing something the way something feels. Right, um, like if you're talking about wind, you might talk about how it feels, how it sounds, even how it tastes like, or what it tastes like, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking about a person, you can also think in terms of the five senses. Maybe there are one or two or three different types. And, and one sense we always think about, almost always, is the visual. Right, so that's one of the most obvious of the five senses. In fact, we I think maybe overuse that one sense, right? But besides the way something or someone looks, you know, a person might uh, feel a certain way, and I mean the way that that person feels to you, right? I mean, like 
if you feel this person, does this person feel soft? What does this person smell like? What does this you know, person taste like? Whatever. Uh-huh. Okay. And, and so you can, depending on the message, right? Depending on how you want to describe this person, right? We can also think of the five senses in how we describe a person, a thing, an event, or whatever. And that, this is what I'm referring to. Is it, I want you to think about maybe, um, maybe some some of the senses that you could bring in, right? When you're thinking, and this is throughout your poem. Maybe not just this one line, but you know, throughout your your poetry, how you might find ways, right, to uh, to describe the person. And even in the third line, I like how you say playing, discovering, creating, right? Those are good words. Um, but even in this line, the third line with the verb and the ing can be something, uh, you know, figurative. It doesn't have to be literal, right? I like your fourth line, a partner in crime, right? Now, my partner in crime um, think about, I, I like the use of figurative language there, but maybe develop a little bit more. I, if I feel like when I read your poems, the, or the, the lines rather the, I feel like the third, let's see the fourth line. Uh, I feel like there's something else there. Like I'm, I'm like, I would like to know more about this person based on this idea of being a partner in crime. You know what I mean? Like yes. even even more so than him just playing and discovering and creating. If there's something else there, like uh, that that you could think about that would describe even more or reveal more about this person, especially when you're using this term partner in crime. Like maybe you you guys went through something together, right? I'm when I when I hear. And partner in crime, this is what I think. This is what I, I imagine, that you guys went through something. And so if you can express something that you went through with this person that also ends up describing what this person is, then you've just moved to a different level, right? You're, you just created a better poem, I feel, um, about who this person is, maybe what you went through. It depends on what the message you want to, to express, but this is kind of what I'm thinking when I'm, I'm reading this. And so the reason, and this is for everybody too, you know, a lot of the feedback that I give or suggestions, these are just my interpretations, right? So a creative thing like poetry is very personal and it's very individualistic. So I'm trying to, show you guys form and types of poems, but also ways of sharing figurative language. But at the end of the day, right, this is your expression and I want you to have choice of what you want to say. But I think it's important to get feedback from others and even your classmates. If you guys can look at each other's work, share each other's ideas and get feedback from, from someone else to say, okay, how would they interpret this you know, this is how I interpret it, but how would somebody else interpret it so that you get some perspective and, and it might help inform you on how to make some subtle changes to, uh, to conclude your, your poem. Okay. Okay, teacher, got it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, Lisette, go ahead. Yes, um, teacher, please can you check my, um, my sin, sin quen? Sorry, mm -hmm. how do you say sin? Uh, sin, sin Kane. It's like, sin uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie Citizen Kane. Sin Kane. Sin, sin Kane. Sin yeah. Okay, yes, please. I'll take it. Yes, I'll take a look at your sin cane. All right. Um, I, I like what you have here, uh, Lisette. A couple of things here that I want to share here. So flower, pretty lovely. Now, I would uh, 
I would maybe take another look at some other adjectives that might even be more descriptive and meaningful depending on what you know what you want to what you want to say now these are good adjectives pretty it's a pretty flower right it's a lovely flower um there's there are a lot of ways to describe what a flower is and i want you to think specifically what this flower daisy is for for you and um maybe think about some other adjectives that are even a little bit more descriptive. Okay. <clears throat> now I like uh, shining, shining, dancing. Now for me, shining is like a positive, something that's appealing to you, that's positive, that expresses an, an, a positive emotion about flower. Same way with dancing, and I really like that word, dancing, a dancing flower, right, shining. Now, falling, I'm not sure. I feel like falling almost expresses a, a negative aspect of the, of the flower. And I feel like almost everything else in your poem is expressing a positive idea. So when I read it, I feel like the word falling uh, doesn't quite fit. I mean, it feels like it's the negative, like it's where everything else is positive. So that, that's, that's how I, I read it. This is like what I think about when I read your poem. Okay, so you might want to think about falling. With a white, with, with a white, um, okay, so, all right, so let's take a look here. Are you, are you, you're using a word count, right? So how many words do we need to have in the fourth line, Lisa? <laughs> I'm sorry? Eight uh, words or syllables, sorry. I don't know. Wh which are you using? Are you using a word count or a syllable count? I use uh, eight syllables. All right, so you're using syllables? Yeah. All right. So, okay. Um here with a white skin all right so we have to be careful with grammar especially when it comes to articles and so we wouldn't say with with a white skin when we're referring to someone's skin we would say with white skin or with dark skin so right. here we wouldn't use the the article all right, so I'm just going to say remove the article, but you may have to rework this line again to, right? In the same way with hair, we wouldn't say with a hair, with a golden hair. We would say with golden hair, with white skin, right? So take a look at, uh, at, that, at that line. Now, the flower <clears throat> has white skin and golden hair. So a flower has white skin and golden hair. All right, Daisy. Okay. All right. So yeah, I would just take a look at the article in fourth in the fourth line, and then falling in the third line, and then maybe some alternatives uh, for the second line in terms of the adjectives that you're using uh, to to describe. Now with this the the uh, with the sin cane, right here we have words that express a feeling, all right, 
Uh, words that express a feeling in the fourth line. All right. So a white skin. <clears throat> All right. So just keep that in mind in the fourth line. You're trying to express a feeling. And here I'm thinking of the, of the senses. So, you know, a flower usually, you know, there is uh, the sense of smell that can be really strong. So if you can articulate, instead of just what it looks like, what does it smell like? What does it feel like? Maybe what it even it tastes like. A flower tastes like something, right? Where we don't usually think of a flower, or at least some flowers, tasting a certain way, maybe that's something that you can also bring in, right? So instead of the, the sense of, uh, of sight, we bring in the sense of smell or the sense of taste, Right? What does it feel like to your fingers? What does this flower feel like when you touch it? Okay, so maybe even what does it sound like? What does the flower sound like? Right, so if you can really bring in some of the other senses instead of just the sense of sight, I think also this will bring your, uh, your poem to life. I think it will be a, an, another way of really describing this, uh, this flower. Okay. Okay, teacher. Um, teacher. Yes. And uh, also, please can you check my tanka? Alrighty. All right. I I really like the first line. Nights as cold as ice. Excellent. Nights as cold as ice. Five syllables. Second line, empty skies through your eyes. How many syllables do you have in the second line? Empty skies through your eyes. Empty skies through. Mm. Empty skies through your eyes. Ah, six. All right. And how many do we need? Seven. All right. Um, but keep the same idea. I mean, I like, I like the words and the idea that you're using. Okay. So just uh, be careful with the syllables there. Okay. How the sweet pains rise. All right. How the sweet pains rise. Nights as cold as ice, your empty skies through your eyes. Now, when we look at the tanka, all right, we need to make sure that in the third line that we include what's called a volta or a turn, or you can even look at it as a twist. It's like a change in the story. Uh, what are you changing from and to in this first stanza. Mm -hmm. Well, in the two first lines, uh, I want to describe the feeling like natural, the natural things. And the second show the, the feeling with the, the the two first and the the two last lines was more um, more sad feeling. Okay, because I, I feel like all five lines have kind of a dark, uh, kind of a sad um, point of view no is that is that uh, accurate am i correct in that saying that they said yeah is that i here here's here's the thing when we look at a tanka right and think of the tankas telling a story that has two parts the first two lines are the first part and the last three lines are the second part. Now, 
what are the differences between these two parts of the story? Well, they could be a lot of things, but it could be some, some sadness in the first part that changes to happiness. It could be going from, let's say, a difficult situation to something that is easier. It could go from darkness to light or from light to darkness, right? I'm looking for like two kind of extremes, two sides of the story, right? Maybe it's a person who was struggling in the first two lines. Now the person has reached some form of success or vice versa. It could be somebody who has all the success in the first two lines and then, uh oh, something happens negatively in the last three lines. So in your case, in this example, what are the two aspects of your story? What do you think? What do you, uh, what do you want to express in this first stanza that make up the two parts of the story? Mm -hmm. Everything in sadness and and loneliness. Okay, can you repeat that again, please? Then sadness and loneliness. Sadness and what was the second word? Loneliness. Loneliness. Sadness. So the first part is sadness or the second part? Um, the first. Yeah, I, I don't know, Alyssa, because you have the word sadness in the last line. And for me, oh. sadness and loneliness, like when you're lonely, usually you're, you're sad. And I feel like we need a turn. We need like the opposite. We need like two parts of the story that are contrasting, right? You, you even use, I think, in the second stanza, but, and I think that's a very good connector to start the third line, is to begin with but. That's a great connector. You can use contrasting connectors to begin the third line to say, okay, there's the first thing in the first two lines. Now, but, now I'm going to shift and say, something that's contrasting. This is my point. We need to have two contrasting views from the first two lines versus the last three lines, mm -hmm. right? And you can use a connector like, but you don't have to, but you can. Even the connector now that you're using, right, is fine. But I feel like here, nights as cold as ice. For me, that's negative. It's like loneliness, cold as ice. There's no, nothing living out there. It's, it's, uh, it's black, right? I mean, for me, that just screams like something bad is, is happening. Empty skies through your eyes, right? So we're looking at somebody's looking into nothingness and alone maybe, right? And those are good ideas, right? By themselves, those two lines are really strong. But now when we go into the third line, now sweet pain, the sweet pains rise. So still something negative, some, someone is hurt. Someone is feeling sad and it's, and it's getting worse, right? Where, where you know, maybe we, uh, the darkness of your absence. So, I mean, I, I think I would try to be a little bit more uh, contrasting looking at the first two lines versus the last three lines. Again, so that it has a bigger impact on where the story is going, right? That, you know, uh, usually any story that you watch, go, if you go to the movies and you watch a, a movie or, or any type of television series, there's some sort of contrast that's going on, maybe in the character, you know, maybe the character changes, 
Maybe the character was weak at the beginning. Now the character's strong at the end. And so mm -hmm. this is what you can think about also when you're developing your uh, tanka, right? Okay. Uh, tender sounds to hear. Tender sounds to hear. Trees and views for sing. Okay, and looking at your second stanza, how many syllables in the second line? Mm -hmm. Five. Uh huh. Two. And how many? How many do we need? Uh, no. Uh, the second the second was only um I don't complete. <laughs> I complete for. Ah, uh, okay. So you're still working on the second stanza. Yeah. Oh, okay. No problem. All right. So yeah, just take that into consideration, Lisette. Try to make those changes, and if you want me to take another look at it, then let me know. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, you're welcome. Hi, teacher. Hello. Uh, sorry, I I checked the um, feedback you gave me on my tanka and. I think I'm thinking about well changing it every changing everything because now I can't find a way to fix it. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna make another one. Uh what are you trying to fix? Or what is it a uh, well, is that, line? Uh all of them. <laughs> I oh, okay. committed a lot of mistakes, so I think I'm gonna make another one. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um right. thank you. Sure. Yeah, if you guys want to, you know, based on the feedback, want to change completely, that's fine. Um, if you want to talk about a particular line or direction of your poem, that's fine. I noticed that uh, some of you still have not created your wiki, so I just want to make sure if you guys have questions about how to create your wiki, um, you know, let me know. Now's, now's the time. The the part of this assignment is your poetry reading, but I'm also comparing what you read in your poetry reading versus what you uploaded to your wiki. So as you're making changes, right, there's two reasons why we're using the wiki. One is so that I can I can see how you're advancing and offer feedback as needed, uh, but also that you have a place to share this and uh, keep making changes up until the time that you read your poem. So uh, make sure that you're using the wiki and uh, again, upload it here. And then you even outside of class, you can ask me to take a look at it and I can leave comments. Um, if, if you're needing that, but make sure guys that you you've created your wiki in the virtual classroom for both the Sin Kane and the Tenka for both poems. It'll be the same, basically the same idea that we did last week with the limerick, and it will be what we do next week when we go into the sonnet. Thanks. Okay, is this Caro? Yes. Okay, you're Sin Kane, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I have questions in the four line because I I didn't make any change, but you told me something in the comment about that line. So I was wondering. All right. Um, okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's see. So went. All right. Now. All right, so wind. Now, the, the second line, awfully pretty. What I would suggest in the second line are to, is to find adjectives, two adjectives that describe wind instead of awfully, which is actually an adverb, right? Because awfully pretty, awfully modifies pretty. And pretty is like one of those, some adjectives I feel are better than others. Like when we say 
nice and pretty. Um, those are understood, but I don't feel they're like the best types of adjectives that we could use to describe. And when you describe something, I want you to also think about the senses. It's not always about what it looks like, especially with wind. I mean, it's hard. I mean, I guess you could imagine a certain way that the wind looks, but how does this wind sound? How does the wind feel? Even what, how does the wind, what does it taste like? If you can describe with an adjective, two adjectives that describe wind in terms of some of the senses, I think that would be an interesting way to really communicate what it is here, this idea of wind and what it means, you know, what the message is here. And so uh, I'm just going to leave a comment here. I would, my suggestion is to try to find alternatives. And uh, I'm going to type here thinking about the five senses. Does that make sense with the, the senses? Yes. All right. Blowing, talking. Right, um, running. Okay, again, I'm 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 imagining. I'm thinking about verbs that describe this this idea, this notion of wind. And again, talking. What are they saying? How are they talking? And like if you compare, for example, talking versus whispering, the wind whispers, right? So think about what does it really, what does it feel like? What does it sound like? And in talking, of course, that's, that's one, right? Talking, but what about talking? What about running? What about specifically about those, right? And I, I, again, I think you're on the right track. But as you're revisiting this poem, I want you to try to think more specifically, like what's the, the, the specific part of a wind that, like an, that you can relate to? I want you to try to paint a picture in your mind because the reader's going to paint a picture. It may not be the same picture, right? But I want you to try to imagine someone reading this and painting a picture, a visual, Im you know, a visual image in their mind and 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 even an emotion what does it feel like they feel something along, on their skin when they read this right and again the five senses think about the five senses come carry me more come carry me more um yeah i think my comment here was come carry me more come carry me more so the wind you're asking the it's like an imperative. You're telling, you're talking to the wind and say, come carry me more. Maybe this means something, you know, to you, right? That's very personal. I want you to think about what this message means to you, what it means to tell the wind to carry you more. And see if there's another way that you can express this through figurative language where someone else might get kind of an idea about what you mean by carry me more, right? That, like, do you want him to carry you away, right? Or uh, carry you home, right? Or something else, right? All those have different meanings that I think are a little bit more specific. If, we, uh, if we're trying to articulate a meaning, we want to think, how would someone else interpret this and this is why I particularly like figurative language, examples of figurative language that have been around for years that try not to make up your own figurative language. In fact, I would suggest don't do that. Don't come up with your own figurative language. Just find examples, right? They're idiomatic. They're specific. They've been around for a reason. They've been around for a long time because they're meaningful. 
And so use those. There's nothing wrong with using, you know, uh, uh, an example of figurative language that's been around for forever, so to speak. In that line, I thought I was using alliteration. Well, at least um, I was trying. I was uh, okay. Which kind? Can you say that again? Alliteration, because it says a number of words having the same first consonant sound. Okay. So I thought I was. All right, and and that's fine. That's true, but I'm also thinking about the 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 meaning. So in alliteration, and and again, come carry me more. I get and for, for in terms of an alliteration, it works. But I'm thinking about the meaning, like what does it mean exactly? And and for me, at least when I read it, I kind of lose the meaning. I feel like there's something that you know that I don't know, and I'm I want to know what what it is that you're that you're saying here like I, I i'm curious like come carry me more well why why is it i mean carry you away from something or or and and maybe that meaning that idea in line four you could develop your whole poem around that idea about wind right you could still start with wind but what about this carrying me away or carry come carry me more like i feel like there's something there like there's an untold story and and my suggestion to you is to tell us that story in these five lines again you can maybe keep a lot of what you already have but that's what i feel when i read that line it's like wow there's something there i'm curious now what what uh, i feel like i'm missing something what is it that that you're trying to express. I think if you can pull it off, even in these uh, verbs and the ing and the adjectives, if you can share through the five senses what this idea here about carry me away, carry me home, uh, you know, it's like you rely on the wind to, uh, you know, make some meaningful aspect of your life or whatever. Just try to share that in the poem. And I think if you can do that, then. Yeah, uh, I think you'll be happier with the end result. I would also check the last line here, breeze the spelling. Uh, yes, I wasn't sure about it. Yeah, and but uh, I, I used to have air, and you said like emptiness. Yeah, and again, I'm thinking like wind has a bigger significance than just a breeze or an air. It's like I feel like there's something there that, you know, and maybe it's something about kind of going with nature or, or I don't know. Uh, think about a synonym that also reflects the idea, the message of the, because a breeze, yeah, I mean, wind and breeze, you know, I, I feel like, again, just having a, a more descriptive adjective, again, think of the senses, right? If you can oh. think of a sense that, one of the senses that really relates to this idea of wind and, and the message that you're communicating, perhaps you can find an, an alternative to can really conclude that um, poem in a way that's significant. Okay. Oh, I think I got it. I just thought it was like literally a synonym of the word. Ah, no, I mean, yeah, and, and yeah, maybe that was my mistake, right, is, is uh -huh. yeah, it is a synonym. When I tell you guys synonyms and, and adjectives that describe, it's all within, within the context of figurative language or the five senses. Always think, always, always, always. Five senses, figurative language. Five senses, figurative language for every word that you're using. Now, maybe you... You know, there are a few words or times where you're literal, but I'm, I'm encouraging everyone to try to be as figuratively or uh, write as figuratively as possible f throughout all of your poems. Okay, guys, I know we went a little over today. We'll stop there. If you guys want me to look at something, continue send sending me messages in Microsoft chat, and uh, we'll stop there for today. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll start tomorrow, 8 o'clock sharp few minutes to practice and get prepared, and then we'll do our poetry reading for Tankas and Sin Canes. Thanks, guys. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye.